Hi, I'm Lane Gray, founder of Vivanista, and I'd like to welcome you to our web tutorials on fundraising. Today's tutorial is going to be on the event feasibility quiz that we have developed, the first section of it being on experience. But first, we're here at the Vivanista homepage, and I'm going to take you through and how to navigate to that feasibility quiz through our fundraising chairwomen club. So here, we just go into clubs. And once we get to the club page, you can scroll down and you can see the Fundraising Chairwomen Club. This is a great place for women in leadership positions, uh, for charitable event fundraisers, and to actually share best practices, insights, experience, expertise on everything from auctions to budgets, you name it. So within the club, you can access our feasibility quiz. And the way you do that is you scroll down and you'll see here we have a link over to the feasibility quiz. This is one of the benefits of this particular class. Feasibility quiz is on, as I said previously, on the organization's experience, your volunteers. This consists of five questions. And the first question is, what are the number of fundraising events produced by your volunteer group within the last five years? So say, for example, your group does a fashion show in the winter and a walk-a-thon in the summer and has for the past five years. So that would be 10 um, events. So you would just put 10 into your uh, line item and you can see that it actually creates the number of points for you. In each section there's a bar which you want to pass in terms of number of points to be able to get a final result that has a recommendation that you proceed forward. The second question is what is the number of times your group has run the same event being considered? Well, with the example of Fashion Show and Walkathon, maybe now you're considering doing a bake sale. So this is a new type of event. So you haven't done one of these events previously, so we'll put in zero. The number of events your group has produced that have post-event reports available? Well, as you can tell, post-event reports are extremely important for any forthcoming chair to be able to review as to what went well and what went um, poorly or had areas for improvement of previous events. So let's say that of those 10 events, that half of them had post-event reports. So I'm going to put in five. Next is the number of current staff professional staff involved in those previous events. Say we've had, from the nonprofit standpoint, there have been three people involved in, um, in events in the past. And finally, the question of number of experienced staff dedicated to work on the event being considered. Well, the nonprofit has had its own financial concerns over the recession, so it's now only down to two individuals. So I put in two, and then I'll continue and see what that actually says. Oh good, congratulations, excellent organizational experience. That merely means that we've actually surpassed that bar and in terms of experience that it looks like our event will be successful. But now if we go, um, if we go back one, back to each of these um, items, you can change them if um, any additional information uh, comes out. So what we're going to do over the next six uh, tutorials is talk about each one of these sections. Today we went over experience of your group and next uh, time we'll go over the actual committee, how important it is to have leaders in the committee, um, the size of your committee to make sure that your event is going to be a success. So thank you so much for participating and um, other things that you can do to make sure that you're successful with your event is that you could also join the Chairwomen um, uh, Club and then we also do have a sample post-event report on the site um, for you to take a look at. So thanks so much for attending and we'll look forward to seeing you here back at Vivanista.